Welcome to the latest video briefing on the drought conditions in Southern California. This update is July 17th. This is Alex Tardy, National Weather Service Meteorologist. Across California, widespread drought conditions prevail. And you may have noticed the California Department of Highways, Caltrans, putting information on messaging boards such as this. The drought across California is already taking its toll. Recent estimates look at expenses reaching $2 billion. Here's an example of recent fires in San Diego County. And what was most noticeable with these fires was the vegetation or the brush burned at conditions not typical of May, but typical of September as shown on the chart. Compounding the issue with the drought across California is the record warmth since this winter. This shows November through June record mean temperatures, including highs and low temperatures, many regions in the red, indicating the record warmth. So we've not seen a period this warm in history in those areas. Temperatures, we also looked at these, and these temperatures so far, uh, when you look at numbers from January 2014 into July, most locations in Southern California are ranked one, first place for the warmest. You can see the next warmest on the right-hand side. This is an average of high and low temperatures. Here's a chart that shows the precipitation between October and April, or a rainy season. You can see in California statewide, 2013-14 was very close to the driest year of 76-77. In fact, the rankings for the temperatures across the region, including the entire state, averaged together 63.4 degrees and the 20th century average is only 58. That's record number one. And the precipitation below, you can see it's the driest statewide since 1977. Let's look at some of the precipitation from October through June. The percent of normal is shown on the left-hand side. The bright red areas, those are under 40% of normal. Large area of less than 50% of normal, really covering most of the state. California precipitation was at the record driest between October and June. It was not, except in Central California, but it was the top 10% as shown on the right. The weather pattern that prevailed and caused this acceleration to the drought over the past 12 months is shown here. Upper level high pressure in the Gulf of Alaska blocked most of the storms, carried them away to the east, and also allowed a lot of cold air to spill across the Great Lakes region. The same general weather pattern continues across North America. When you look at the past three years, the compound impact of precipitation, all together three seasons, and you can see the red areas are nearing extreme dryness. This also takes into account areas that typically get a lot of rain, like Northern California, and areas that don't get a lot of rain, like our deserts to the east. So this reflects what we call the standardized precipitation index. This is valid for the past 36 months up to June. Some of the numbers that reflect those three-year deficits are shown here. In general, most areas are one to two full seasons behind where they should be. Precipitation deficits are ranging from 12 to 24 inches. So areas that were expected to see significant rainfall each season have basically missed a season or two. When you look at the water year, these are the numbers across Southern California. Water year deficits, which in California runs July 1st to June 30th, generally around 50% or less of what they should have received. The drought, the drought continues to expand. We see the most recent drought update on July 17th that the extreme drought, the area in red, has expanded across all of Southern California. 
The worst drought, D4, covers about half of the state. The drought is not expanding because we're in the dry season, but it's accumulative impacts on soil, vegetation, fire weather, and overall water supply in the state. Let's take a look at that change. When you compare April to April or May to May from 2013 to 2014, significant degradation in the drought. A severe drought really increased over the past year due to the cumulative effects that we have discussed so far. The brown areas show the most significant changes in the past year. The water supply severely impacted now. You can see these accumulative dry years have taken its toll well below historical averages, about 50% of where they should be. And the major reservoirs of Northern California feeding from the Sierra Nevada and Southern Cascades, barely around 40% of capacity. How about here in Southern California? We are starting to notice a decrease here as well. Uh, for example, the Diamond Valley Reservoir, very large reservoir in Riverside County, now down to 64% of capacity. Even in Colorado, the two major reservoirs are only 45% of capacity. Here in San Diego County, uh, local storage is only at 39% of capacity. Snowpack did not contribute to much runoff this spring. In fact, snowpack was very scarce at elevations below 7,000 feet. How scarce? The snowpack was measured this May, and all areas of the Sierra Nevada was under 10% as of early May. And so we did not get that needed runoff to help increase the reservoir storage across the state. What's the outlook coming up? Well, we expect hot weather, hotter than you normally expect this time of year, as shown here. High probability of extreme heat for the interior part of Southern California and the deserts due to a heat wave coming up in the latter part of July. The monsoon should also return. We are expecting above normal precipitation, at least for the extreme desert southwest. That'll be for the period the last week of July, as shown here. What's the weather pattern that's going to cause this? Well, on July 22nd, a large, unusually strong ridge of high pressure is going to anchor itself over the Four Corners region. This has the potential of bringing record heat in that area. It'll also expand into Southern California as well. It'll weaken slightly as we get towards the end of the month, but still basically have an anchor across the Western US and the desert Southwest. Here are some links for the information we discussed here, including the latest information on the drought monitor, ways to save water at Save Our H2O. Thanks for tuning in. Also follow this video on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and you can see other videos that we have located on our YouTube page.